64-bit legend. Welcome. Legend of the game like GoldenEye, I'm more than right. Yeah. The perfect dart is dreams that seem to come to light. 64-bit, the shit, it's as real as it yeah. gets. We can yeah. talk sports, games, and music, take your pay. Yeah. Point yeah. with the news, pull up and crack a brew. Crack. Smoke one with the crew, Smoke. tune in and take a view. Watch. We here to raise the bar from the lowest yeah. mark. Sit your yeah. ass down and listen, it's time for the show to start. Show to start. Show to start. Show to start. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the 64 Bit Legends. I am Bobby Caboose. As always, looking for that hot tag is Melvin Troy. I'm tagging in. Are we doing cracking a power in? Hour? Yep, we're going to be drinking for the next hour. Here we go. All right, well, Bottoms up. If you've listened to the last episode of our podcast, we deep dived quiet on the set or quiet on set. Um, yep. The Nickelodeon documentary on. HBO Max. Yep. Um, going into Dan Schneider, Brian Peck, and that other creep. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, really feeling bad for Drake Bell. Yeah. Drake Bell came out as the big victim. And our biggest takeaway, just to summarize the previous episode, which you should go back and listen to, but it, the previous episode really. Uh, we, we're not defend. I don't want to defend Dan Schneider because right. he he is an asshole. There's something creepy about him. I can't deny that. That I'm not even gonna like. I see it. I've spent uh, streams talking about him being a creep, so yeah. I understand that that's there. But that documentary, in short, did a terrible job in really demonizing Dan Schneider. They did a great job of demonizing Brian Peck, who is a yeah, demon. He's yes. just a walking yeah. demon, pedophile demon. Um, but to put them two in the same category, they did a terrible job. It should have been probably yeah. two separate documentaries, I think. Yeah, if, um, if they were going to use, unless, or if there's, or or get into some of the other, like, other uh, what, what theories and stuff yeah. online that are floating around Dan Schneider. Like, yeah. there's, there's a lot of other stuff I seem to remember that were that was creepy about him, but they just did a terrible job. Really talked a lot about little minor grievances, um, and uh, and yeah, and and really the 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 horror story out of it is what happened to to Drake Bell. You're right, That's, and I actually um, it's funny. I actually went back and watched a couple episodes of all that like mm -hmm. one night and um, before I was going to sleep, and it was I believe it was probably the first season of, of Amanda Bynes in there. Yeah. Um, and you can you can totally tell that uh, Katrina Johnson has a little bit of a gripe. I mean, like there was episodes like I probably watched because, you know, they run quick because they don't a they don't show the concert at the end because. Oh, right. The copyright probably. Um, and um, no commercials. Right. So yeah. each episode is like 15 to 20 minutes long. Yeah. Um, so I, I was able to watch a handful. Dude, there is whole episodes that she doesn't even appear and she's just on like the front credit. Yeah, and she yeah. is not in one skit. Like I'm like, damn! Like you did really get the boot, and it was <laughs> yeah. it was part of the uh, like the time where she got like more attractive and grew kind of grew up and yeah, yeah, she know, became the, like an adult, right. yeah, and she aged out essentially, yeah. Um, but so Lori Beth Denberg was still in there every episode. You know what's crazy about Lori Beth? Lori Beth Denberg. I would say Lori Death Benberg, but Lori Beth Denberg is. Uh, <laughs> She looks the same now know. as she was a child. But, what but, is going but on? But the funny thing is, I'm watching these skits, right? And there are, like, a lot of skits where she's, like, quote, unquote, like, the mom. And she's with, like, a grown-ass man. Yeah. Like, look at her now. Oh, you guys can't see, but just Google her now. Like, it's obvious that she is an adult in comparison to being a child. But it is, like, she looked like a fucking, like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say she looked like an adult. I think she just, because she's heavy, yeah. she just retained that facial elasticity. It's only until, like, there's there's a clip, I'm, there's a picture I'm looking at now that looks... That says 90s and now, and yeah. it's like split screen. But yeah, she's like in a, she's in multiple um, skits where, like, she's got, like, a grown man as a husband. <laughs> and I don't know how old she was when she was on this show. I mean, I'm assuming that she was a kid because it was yeah. a good show. But yeah, it's uh This is twenty nineteen, uh when she passes the vital information desk on. Okay, so she must have came but when they rebooted yeah. it, uh Keenan rebooted it. And you can tell she's an adult here. Yeah. 
But it, look at this other picture. Um, I mean, there's or here. This is even better. Like you can kind of see around the eyes. Yeah. But honestly, it's because she got. It's like she got fatter. Right. <laughs> so she went, she got fatter, which retained the youth in her face in a weird way. It's just so strange. I don't, I don't know. Um. But yeah, that's. I don't know. Why are we talking about... Which I want to know what Lori Beth Denberg has to say about this. Yeah. This is what I want to know. Because I'm sure... I'm sure that she's got stories. Um, she's probably just in the cafeteria. <laughs> probably. You know, it's usually one of those things... Like, you always hear these stories. Like, if she came out... What was that one guy... Child act... Fat child actor... Lost all the weight, and then he was doing the media tour. He's on Joe Rogan because he lost all the weight. He was it wasn't he like one of the the fat kid and hook, not the fat kid and hook white white kid. White uh, kid white he kid. was um God, I don't have to look him up now. He was um wasn't he like the fat villain in the Power Rangers or something? Oh, Frankie the Enforcer. Yes, yeah. He was in Boy Meets World. Was he okay? And he was uh, he was in um, uh, like uh, remember the Titans and yeah, he yeah, was yeah, in yeah. Blow. Fat kid, remember the Titans. Okay, there it popped right up. What's and his name? And he's like ripped now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is perfect. Like that's his big comeback right now. Is he got himself in shape? He's ripped. He lost a bunch of weight, uh, and that's his big comeback story. Because Ethan Supley, yeah, what uh, he was on My Name Is Earl. Yeah. Okay, so he was. He's done some recent stuff, but there's a gap. If you go on his Wikipedia, there's definitely a gap in his career here. Um, and then he made a comeback over the last couple of years. And I'm just saying, Lori Beth Denberg, if Denberg went and lo- did the same thing, she could make a comeback. Yeah. She's got to do that DDP yoga. Like, where is Lori Beth Denberg now? I got to look her up. Like, what is she doing now? Um... I don't know, but Mr. Feeney just turned 97. He's still alive? Yes. He was at Comic-Con last year when I went. Oh, that's right. At 96 years old. Lori Beth Denberg. I found her Instagram. She's got 45,000 followers. That? That, I thought that was her at first. Moment. What? No, that's just a friend or something. Oh, here's her and Mark Summers. Oh, yeah. Old friends and the 90 kids. Yay. Uh, actor, singer, pod. Oh, they have a podcast. Uh oh yeah I, that's right I do she did a podcast with Danny Tamborelli yeah oh, they she, they live together uh, her and Sinbad look at that what is she is she pregnant I'm out from under my five day sweaty COVID sleep confusion my, oh it was a COVID test <laughs> I thought it was like hey I'm pregnant this was from 107 weeks ago her and Danny Tamborelli have a pod I want are they still doing the podcast. That's always the thing, that these celebrity podcasts. They don't last too long. Bad advice with Lori Beth Denberg. When's the last episode? There's no dates on this. Oh, so, who's that guy? Uh, I don't know. That's not that's not Danny. Danny. No, that's not Danny Temporelli. Danny Temporelli's a ginger. So it doesn't, it doesn't look like she's doing the podcast with them anymore. Seltzer King Podcast is the network. Pussy Boys? Pussy Boys. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Pussy Boys. She's on the same network. With, oh, Danny and Mike. Okay, so Danny and Mike now. I don't know who Mike is, but Danny Tamborelli has a podcast with his guy Mike now. Now she's doing bad advice with Lori Beth Denberg. We got to listen to that. Not today, but Danny Tamborelli, comedic podcast with TV Brothers. Danny Tam- Oh, this is the Pete and Pete. Yeah. It's Pete and Pete doing a podcast. They have 132 episodes and. But where's the dates? Like, when was the last time they did an episode? That's what I want to see. What's it called? Let me look. Danny oh, and Mike. Look Danny. that up on Apple Podcasts. Uh, I want to see because a lot of these celebrity po- they come and they go so quick. I mean, they did 132 episodes. That's a couple years. So that's I got to give them that. But I don't know. Like sometimes they'll do these. No, they, it looks like uh, they do one. They yeah. just did one March thirteenth. Okay, it's it's now f- April second. 
So and what? the one before that was February twelfth, <laughs> but the one before that was like in two thousand twenty-two. So okay, so I don't the, know if it's like coming back. Yeah, they're, it's it's dead. It's a dead pot. And then they're like, no, no, we got to do it again. And then they just don't do it again. They're just like, oh no, I guess not. Um. Anyway. So yeah, that's all right. So Danny and Mike is dead. Well, let's look up Lori Beth. Then bad advice. I'll look up that one. I got it in front of me. Uh, bad advice. Because I was doing this recently. Like we got to do an episode about podcasts because there's podcasts I used to listen to and I checked in on from the, some of these comedians that are kind of not as popular anymore. But I like the podcast. Oh, yeah. Bad advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Uh, last episode was uh, July 1st, uh, 2022. That's a great day. 2022. <laughs> That's yeah. four years or two years ago. Was that your? Yeah, that is my birthday. The first? Yeah. Oh, that was like the sixth or something. No. Um, great and, friend you are. Well, I don't know. I get confused. I know yours is like one of the twenties in September. Yeah, it's one of them. Yeah, it's one. It's of the twenty first. It's literally the tw- it's the first twentieth. The first twentieth. Yeah, Not, technically that's the second twentieth. Well, it's the but yeah, you get it, you get it. So okay, so she's not doing anything anymore. Either. What does she do for work? I want to know then. What's her? She je- just Denbergs. She's like Denberg. I mean, her last Instagram post was twenty seven weeks ago. So she's not even active on Instagram. Yeah, she's drinking a uh, Long Island or something. What's what's Lori Beth? D- 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 her link goes to this. Yeah, what has she been? Is she acting? She's at a wedding officiant. Well, I'm sure she people pay. Maybe pay her. She's a master of karate. Was that a all that reference? I don't know. What is she? Do- I'm oh. not a big Lori Beth Denberg guy. She's 48, by the way. She's over. T- she's like 11 years older than me here. Okay, so last. Oh, she was in Good Burger 2. Con- she played the same character in Good Burger 2. So she looks yeah, like she she's like act. a weird customer. Before that, she was in a short film in 2019. And then she played a smoker playing Uno in Ham on Rye in 2019. <laughs> and then the previous m- movie before that was t- 2006, 18 Fingers of Death. She was, uh, hey, she was. In the 90s house in a reality show. She was on Wild and Out. Uh, she was on an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. She w- Oh, she was in the movie Dodgeball, credited as L.B. Denberg. What? <laughs> I don't know why they put that in the notes, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, yeah, an episode of just some random. I'm just smiling at you in her picture. Worst Cooks in America, she was a contestant. So she just gets like a weird... Yeah, just just a an all oh there was an all that takeover for Wild and mm. Out. That's what it was. So they brought back some all that people like Kel and stuff, probably. Yeah, and then she was Team Kel versus Team Keen and on Double Dare in twenty eighteen. Okay. She's still riding this Nickelodeon thing out. Yeah, I mean that's you know honestly, but that's the thing. This this goes back to something that I was saying off before we started the podcast about like. As long if she just would just continue to do something consistently, just even like a podcast, like then whatever the next thing she would do would have a lot more oomph behind yeah. it. You know, I was just saying that for myself. But I she's, gotta, she's being all Denbergish. Yeah, she's just being a. She just hit a big Denberg and Denberg, sank. more like Deadberg as far as her activity <laughs> goes. She's still alive, but yeah, Lori Beth. Dead. Um. Anyway, but that we weren't. We didn't. We're not, beat. <laughs> we're not here to talk about Denberg. We're here to talk about Schneider. Yes. So kind of a follow up episode, kind of a sequel to last week's episode. Yeah. So Dan Schneider uh, posted a video, a, tw- a 19 minute. We'll call it an interview, but it's kind of like it's it's like a wrestling interview. It's yeah, like a it's, it's a work. It's a bit of a work. Um, but he posted an interview addressing the quiet on the set documentary. And I figured I saw some of it earlier. I know you haven't seen it yeah, yet. I haven't seen it yet. So I figure we'll just kind of watch it and respond to it with what we kind of already talked about last week. And I will say this. Again, HBO did a pretty bad job because some of the stuff I'm sni- I'm siding with Schneider. Yeah. I'm siding with Schneider on this. I'm Schneider side, and I don't want to. I really don't You're want to. You're swiping right on Schneider. I don't want to do it. I don't like him. I really don't like him. I think he's a creep. But with that being said, the arguments that were put forth, he kind of knocked some of it down. Hey, I mean, 
if we are two women writers on all that, we would have to share a salary. Well, he addresses that. I, I'm, so, I'm, I can't wait because uh, that fucking Karen was a yeah. fucking bitch. So apparently he gets a boogie from iCarly. Yeah, I don't know. Who bo- I, 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 that's past my time. Yeah, I was not an iCarly. My sister watched it, but I just was never. It was yeah, definitely past my time. Um, hold on, let me plug that. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll just start off right, and we'll uh, just dive into it. Let's see. Hey, it's Boogie. Hey, I Boogie. played T-Bone Nickelodeon. What up, Carl. Boogie? I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and Did you? I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Awesome. awesome. Dan, how are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Dan has lost weight. Yes, and he grew a goatee. Well, yeah, because he's got a lot of. He had a thick neck. Yeah. Neck's not so thick no more. Nah. It's like a deflated balloon. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the I'm digging his shoes though. Yeah, I, I mean, when I when I watched this episode earlier, the, he's got these Nike's on and I was like, those are looking good. I want those. Those look good. I don't like this guy's shoes though. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I don't like that guy's on. pants either. I, yeah. Bo- Boogie's Boogie's failing in, in the dress code. Yeah. It's Dan Schneider's fucking Patagonia vest and Nike shoes look way cooler than whatever this guy's wearing. And I'm not, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. you are Team that. Schneider all the way right now. I don't want to say any of this stuff, okay? I don't like Dan Schneider. Well, let's see what he's got to say. What we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss... Is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are Imagine you have to watch a documentary Mm -hmm. about a bunch (laughs) of people just bitching about you. Yeah. (laughs) Like, this guy is the worst. Like, like I can imagine him watching this, and he's probably watching it and being like, wait a minute. You made a documentary about this? There's so much worse stuff you could have talked about. You don't know half the story. Why are you? Why did you pick this? He's like, he's like, thank God they didn't go into this other shit. I was like, oh, bro, I'm gonna make a video on this. This will be easy. Knock all this stuff down. And that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. Okay. <laughs> Watching the car. <laughs> I love it. I, I got to give him credit, though. Just like, hey, hey let's talk about those. But that was let's, a little weird. Let's talk about those massages. That's uh, because I be- I truly believe his, the way he acted on set, the, the, the complaints about him asking for massages and acting like a big baby mm-hmm. is why they probably asked him to step away at the time of all that Me Too stuff. Because exactly. they're like, bro, this is yeah. this a powder keg. Right. We can't have this happening. So, of course, you know, and the thing... It, it, He's probably thinking, like, thank God that's all he talked about was the massages. Right. Tent yesterday. It was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm yeah, embarrassed that I did he it. He would then. do it. I Dude, he's about to, to ask any- Boogie for a <laughs> massage right now. I would. Yeah. Afterwards, he's like, oh, I think that went well. You think people are gonna th- like it? He's like, ah, oh, people are gonna hate it. You should turn the comments off, which are turned off. Um, he's like, yeah, you're right. All right. Well, before you go, real quick. You give me a massage real quick? Yeah, my, my neck's really kind of... I got this kink in my shoulder. Yeah, do you want to give me a massage boogie real quick? Come on, Bugs. Like old times. Yeah, like old times. <laughs> like old times. <laughs> boogie gives him the wink and the gun. <laughs> oh, God. Anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. <laughs> they're walking by, they're like, Dan's getting another goddamn Dan- massage. <laughs> and talk to me about the writer's room. Okay. This is good. This, this is the, we, we heard about the writer's yep. We talked about it last week. Yes. You, and you gave your input about the industry as far as, uh, you you know, you were on a much lower scale. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, you're like, this shit happens. Well, yeah, and, and specifically what I'm talking about is the money aspect and the fact that they were, like, sharing a salary. And it was just like, yeah, these are things to complain about. But I was like, 
would you, what was your next job after this though? Right. Like, what did you move on to? The, like, the, what did it? The one bitch fucking worked for a temp agency before and after, so she didn't even have like a like a yeah like a set job. But but what happened once she was able to put writing on a show on her resume? And that's the part. And he'll talk about it. Let's just right. let it play. Come on, folks. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room ever. Period. Oh, I think he's talking about the comments about oh, like women. Women aren't, aren't funny. Yeah, I'm just like whatever. Yeah. They're they're really not. I'm sorry. I have I to know. again. I hate to agree with Dan Schneider, but t- generally speaking, women are just not funny. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, to tell I you. agree. <laughs> just and I hate having to agree with this man. Like I hate Amy Schumer. Yes, she's not funny. No, she's not. We all know this. There are. I'm not saying all women aren't funny, but the vast majority. Yeah. Are not. They're just not. Let's make an episode about queefs. Yeah. And no excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. Um, I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment business. I was green, I was scared, I was excited. It, it meant the world to me that I was getting those opportunities. And I went in and I got lucky because they were great. My first couple of experiences were fantastic. And the fact that, that, and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Um, in the writer's room, there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went beyond the pale and I said things that went too far or made practical jokes that went too far and um, that was wrong and that that was because you know I was an inexperienced producer I was immature wouldn't happen today but um, I'm just really sorry it happened yeah okay so I think I was like okay he's, and, he's, whatever, and, okay so know. the times were different yeah obviously. different times but um, also how old was he or how old is he now versus how old was he then uh, that's a good question let's take a look Dan Schneider um, it should just tell me his age. Yeah, it's... he's fifty-eight now. He's okay. born in sixty-six. So in ninety-six, he would have been thirty. So he would no. So is this early nineties? He would have been in his twenties. Yeah. So I mean, I'm still immature now. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine being. You know, again, not defending Dan Schneider, but being in a position where you're like an executive. Yeah. In your twenties, you know, you're gonna make jokes. Yeah, I mean. By the way, does that look like he's wearing lipstick? Kind of, yeah. He's very pale. I don't know what he's been doing. Um, I don't want to know. I really don't. But he, uh, yeah, you know what he should have done right here? The, what he should have done, because everyone already wants to hate him. When Like, I hate people that have to apologize for, like, three decade old yeah. jokes. Um, they'd be like, yeah, okay, maybe I wouldn't say it today, but I said it back then. Who gives a shit? If you would have just came out with that... Just and turn then, full heel. Not even turn the heel. Just be honest with it. I'd be like, all right. And then he would have been like, but the, the massages were very wrong. And I shouldn't have acted like that and asked people to touch me in weird ways. And I would have been like, okay, you're still a creep, but we can walk away as men. <laughs> I, I would have turned full heel. <laughs> <laughs> be like, fuck Lord Denberg. <laughs> now, we know you've had a lot of success. Yeah, we have. two buddy. decades. Mm-hmm. Thousands of people have worked with you for you. Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay, I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, look, I've had some employees that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years, who would work with me again, but um, not everybody. There's a, still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me, so my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. Was there specific things that you were doing? Sure. I would, uh... I mean, I gotta say, like, I get it. It's, it's high pressure. Again, I don't want to have to side with Dan Schneider. Okay. But again, the complaints are just so frivolous in, in, in the beginning, in the beginning of the documentary series. And this is the stuff that he's he's addressing right now. Like, 
yeah, person there's going to be personality clashes. Yep. He's obviously immature. Yep. Uh, they're doing, he says, 40 episodes a year. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of week, TV. Almost. That's almost once a week. That is a lot of TV because so. most like network television is like 24 episodes a yeah. year. Like that is crazy. So I and a lot of like seasons for TV shows like are only like 10 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. For cable, especially. And yeah, yeah you're dealing with kids TV. So you're dealing with children. It's just like the they're. It's probably harder to kind of work with them and rent. You know, they're kids, you know. Right. So, dude, I'm around kids for like two or three hours, and I'm like, dude, I have to leave. Yeah. So I, I, you know, again, I say all of this. I have to keep putting this out there because I don't want people to get the wrong idea. But you're just a Dan Schneider lover. No, I, I truly think there's there's sin, uh, a sinister darkness inside this man. It's just that. They did such a terrible job trying to expose him, and, and he's going to just be able to walk out of this without a, without a problem. So anyway, he'll talk about these, you know, why? Why were there people not like him? Let's see. Let's What's, see. Um, snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they needed. I would be in too big a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And watching that show, it made me... There were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry, and let's talk about it, and I, I wish you'd had a better time, and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. Now, you've written hundreds of episodes. Thousands of jokes have been told. Yeah. But currently, where we are, uh -huh. some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children. Uh -huh. What do you think of that? All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny. And that's what and we only... were discussing last week. Yeah. If you get to a certain age and you either think of a kid's joke as inappropriate or yeah. as it could turn into something else, like the fucking noses on fucking the shoulders looking yeah, yeah, like yeah. dicks you can make anything look like a dick well you know what this reminds me of is i don't know if you remember this where if you had that vhs cassette of the little mermaid yep they said the cover of the like the little castle yeah had a had, penis has penises now as a kid i looked at that cover so many times i never saw a penis until someone pointed it out someone said hey do you know what a penis looks like and i was like yeah and they're like does that look like a penis to you and i was like i guess kind of but we're attributing, like, there's a there's a level of again. There was the feet stuff was pretty weird. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. There's some stuff that was that was still weird. I'm not I'm not, you know, sweeping up everything for him. But in some of these cases, some of these examples they were given, like MC fetus, like it's just a funny sounding little word. Fetus. Or little was it little, little fetus? I think it was a little fetus. Oh, whatever. You know what it. But. But even, like, okay, even, like, the feet stuff. I don't want to defend the feet stuff, but, like, to a kid, feet can be funny. Because, like, you get your feet yeah. tickled, shit like that. If you're looking at it and be like, oh, my God, Ariana Grande has got some nice feet. You shouldn't be watching fucking Nickelodeon shows, dude. Well, you shouldn't be jerking off to it. Right, yeah. There's, there is, there's a level of, and that's the problem, really, is there's some stuff that's sketch on there. It's a little weird. But you have to check to see... Is that is there an internal bias right. that I have looking at that, making that judgment? Am I perverting something that isn't perverted? And and there's not a clear answer on that. And that's the problem. Right. Is it's ambiguous. But the idea is it's made for children who don't know this stuff. So unfortunately, with some of the examples they used, this what he's saying is correct. Right. It doesn't cover everything though. And the but, ch the children in the show may be teenagers. But those shows aren't for teenagers. They're for, like, kids that are, like, maybe 8 to, like, 12. Yeah, you, Once you hit 13, you're like, I'm not watching iCarly. No. I'm not watching fucking all that. I'm not watching this and that and other. I'm watching MTV. I'm watching reality TV show. I want to be a grown-up. Like, yeah. I don't want to watch kids' shows anymore. Yeah, yeah. By the time I hit like fifteen or sixteen, I'm like, I would, I want to watch porn. Yeah, like that's what you, that's what you, you don't fucking start looking at i, you don't watch iCarly that way or these shows like that or Hannah. Well, that's Disney. You, you still have Disney, to, you, yeah, you still have to, point. you still have to assume. And I know assumptions. You know, people say stuff about assumptions, but you have to assume that these 
kids that are watching it have no sexual like point of view towards this shit. No, because I remember I remember being a teenager and in the we were at an age where there was porn wasn't as readily available as it is now, but it was starting to become more yeah. of that and there was a period where I because of like if you're as like a as a teenager, I would see like a, I'm trying to think of like a name like a Jenna Jameson. Yeah, no one my age looked like that. Right. So I wasn't. So it almost kind of was a detriment where I didn't. I probably didn't find, you know, as someone in high school, I didn't find other people I went to school with. As a, I mean, there was there was girls we considered hot in high school right. when we were in high school, but it wasn't the same. You didn't have that same energy. So you're not – I'm definitely not watching whatever. I wouldn't be watching Drake and Josh for that anyway. Because, but, but you get my point. You wouldn't, right, I wouldn't right, be watching right. one of these shows with that energy. Yeah. Because I'd be like, I would rather just go on fucking Kaza or whatever and download pictures of, or videos of Jenna Jameson and get a virus on my computer. Right. Like would, that's all I would rather I, do. I would rather watch bra and panty <laughs> matches on Raw. Yeah, yes, exactly. Like that's not what – so some of this some of this kind of speaks to the people that are offended by it. And again, though, I'm not saying that all of it's good because it's like, yeah, maybe the feet jokes are innocent as jokes, but we there were a number of clips where adults are touching feet and stuff. Yeah. It's like is there a something where the where I think the possibility of uh, perversion is at is at the level of the people working on the show, not right. for the audience, right. not being made for the. It's for the people it's, on the it's show. It's like that, a power play. Yes, yes, that's where I think the malevolence is at, but not in oh they're putting out you know they're hinting at child pornography or something. Right. Like that. not, that's I don't think that's the case. So, but, but that's a deeper conversation but, that the documentary did not discuss. But again, too, is kids can't produce kids shows. Exactly. You have to have an adult behind it. Yeah. So if you're going to do any sort of humor like that or whatever, it's going to be coming from an adult. Yeah. Like, you know, these it's, you know, again, not trying to side with this creepy shit, but like the people that get that complain about this shit is the same people that like wanted the fucking Washington Redskins to change their name because it's a bunch of white people that don't fucking have any thing else yeah. to do and by the way they're trying real native americans are trying to get the redskins name back oh, so really? <laughs> you know that's yeah, a whole nother subject but and, and that's the problem is like some of these early episodes on this documentary are those types of grievances and um they uh they're they're those types of grievances and they and and it real it, then to 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 Compare that to the Drake Bell story, which is truly disgusting. Right, makes these small little grievances look even more pitiful. Yeah. than before, it's like, man, they did a terrible job. So, Ima- like, imagine, imagine having a documentary made that y- they ask you, they, they're like, Melvin Troy, we need you, we want you in this documentary, and we want you to tell us explicit uh, facts about. Jobs you didn't like about your bosses that you didn't like. Yeah, well, and you're yeah, like, okay, and like everyone else is gonna be like, wow, this dude, like, yeah, what a bitch. Yeah, just bitching he about didn't want to come in on a Saturday. Like, like fuck. Yeah, well, man, I didn't know you had it so hard. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's I. I anyway, well, all right, let's roll on with some Dave. Being funny, okay. Um, now we have some adults looking back at them twenty years later through their lens, and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid's show. Mm-hmm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show, just like I would have done 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like The more people who like the shows, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs to be cut because it's upsetting somebody, let's cut it. So I think it's big for you to say with your work, mm-hmm. if it's viewed as that today, you don't have a problem. Cut it. Cut it. I mean, that's a solution. The, the last thing I want to ever do yeah. is put any content in a show 
that's going to upset my audience and make them want to turn off the TV. Why would I ever want to do that? That makes sense. Now, I, yeah, and that goes to what I just said. It's like I think it's the content itself to the audience is yeah, they're just. I think if there is a if there is malevolence there, it's on the people that are working yeah. the show. And I'm not even saying that Dan Schneider's behind it, which, you know, but he's buddies with some of these people, so right. I don't know. You know, he's the one who hired some of these people over and over again. Like, that Brian Peck worked on multiple shows. Yeah. Like, you're telling me you didn't get a vibe? Right. I want to give you an opportunity to kind of elaborate on something. Okay. The thought process from the series is you had the power to just write a joke and no matter what, it's going on TV. You just had that type of power. Is that true? The the notion that I had the power to just produce whatever I wanted and have it air is completely false. Okay. There were many, Which many I believe levels. that because he's got to, he's got to, it can't be he's the be all end all. He's got to have someone approve. Oh yeah, there's censors. Shit. There's right. like, they even mention it in the documentary that like, what was it like the Penelope taint, like yeah. the, the taint joke, but whatever. And then the censors, they had to lie to the censors and be like, no, no, it means like tainted. And it's like, who cares? It's whatever. Yeah. A fucking nine year old kid's not going to know what a taint is. Yeah. Like, ooh, man, what a crime. Is that, is that as, oh, whatever. I just, I'm, I just keep going back to the fucking Drake Bell thing because that's, that's the real story. Right. That truly is the real story. That's the real crime that is awful, that is horrendous. Of scrutiny. Okay. We had executives in L.A. We had executives in New York. So two coasts. Two coasts. Okay. Of, of, of two. Yes. And not, Wait, and Boogie, the, are we sure there's only two? We got a third one in there? Anyway. North Coast, oh, Canada. Get, get that North Coast. Wait, approval at every stage, really. Okay. And I'm talking about wardrobe. I'm talking about makeup, sound, sets, dialogue, jokes, everything. Now, when you say approval, these, obviously that's a hierarchy, not your... No, colleagues right. or people in the room. Okay. No, no, not my colleagues. No, these are my bosses. Bosses and then their bosses and then their bosses. And they're approving all of this stuff. Okay. Okay. And we're also shooting it in front of all sorts of adults and caregivers and the set teacher and, and the families. Everybody's watching it. And if anybody had said anything, hey, we don't like that. That's not appropriate. Then it would have been cut out. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back a little bit. You're sure. good. You got to push this, back because I push back on, a little. Please. I like that Boogie's pushing back because I'd be like, well, are you sure? Yeah. Because if what if like uh, like the set teacher was like, I don't like that joke. You'd be like, shut up. <laughs> Teach the kids math and shut your face. Go talk to Lori Beth Denver. Yeah. She can't do multiplications. She doesn't know what one times one is. She thinks it's it, two. Yeah. She thinks it's Terrence Howard math. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got get. You want me to get Terrence Howard in here and teach his kids because he can teach them math better than you. And, and that's not good. Micro penis. Yeah. <laughs> We know they're safe. <laughs> We're not Brian pecking around here with yeah, him. Get out of here. The series mm -hmm. painted you in this way that you were just the guy that was doing what he wanted. And mm -hmm. people were afraid to confront you about things. So say, just humor me, say that that was the case. What would have been the ultimate way to... Okay. If nobody on the set, if all of the dozens and dozens of adults that were on the set... If they didn't say anything, if my bosses said, if they insisted, you've got to make a change here, you got to cut that, I had to do it. I had no choice. Got it. Now, this next one. I I mean, he didn't really up. dig deep into that, though, Boogie. I'm, no. I'm kind of dis because he's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, he, he, I mean, this is a softball, and yeah. this is not a real interview. It's on Dan Schneider's YouTube channel. <laughs> like, it's not. Look at his face. This is not impartial. He's like, <laughs> all right, we're on to the next question. Okay, Dan. Yeah, I, I believe you. <laughs> I'll give you a massage later. <laughs> we can do it on camera for your channel. Yeah. The Dan Warp. Anyway, we're, yeah, we're getting a Dan Warp, all right? Don't. Mm -hmm. uh, being a new father, I wouldn't be opposed of, to my child being in the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what age, yeah? Seeing some of those on-air dares. Seeing it now from where you are now in your life. The dares. Now, this well, was like... Remind me about these. So I kind of remember this. this was the um, fear factor for kids type thing. Okay. Where they uh, took a little fetus and they put like a bunch of peanut butter on them and had dogs lick it off. They had oh, like that's a right. scorpion in some kid's mouth. They like buried them with worms. Was there something sexual with that or something? Or no, was it... it was just like just 
it made the kids uncomfortable because like okay um like the dog licking like yeah the, the kid was like had the toe and peanut butter got it got and it and just you know just weird shit okay i, I kind of remember that now i think i was like in the middle of doing something when that part was on and I was like, if that was, and if that was one of those things that came after the Drake story, I was tuned out basically. And, the, and like, they I was just fucking they basically done. had to. They were in like these pods, and like it, would, like a one random pod would go off, and that kid would have to do something. Okay, got it, got it. What do you think of that? I think that some of the on-air dares went too far. I think they pushed the envelope too far. Not all of them, not most of them, but some did. Nickelodeon wanted to do- name them. Name them, Dan. List them off from one to ten. Name them. I see that on TikTok a lot when someone will do like, I was in a marriage and I was abused and blah, 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 or something. It'll be like some like cancellation story. I was dating this person and I was, and then you find, anyway, I don't want to go too deep in that example, but my point is that they'll be in the comments, they'll be like, name them. Who wronged you? Sometimes it's like a real crime, like I was attacked, and then other times it'll be like, this person like emotionally abused me, and then you find out that they never even met in real life. Right. <laughs> were- well, so every time you pause it, it seems like you're always on boogie. Well, yeah, it's a good place to pause. And um, he's thinking, it, dude. This is thinking. His <laughs> his facial expressions, like he looks like he's taking a shit right now. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like. He's, he's 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 holding it back in. He's like, man, can we wrap this up? Yeah, I he's got poop. like his cheeks puffed. I gotta take a poop. He's like, man, this one's gonna be tough. You want to dare me to poop? Because I'll do it. He's like, can I just <laughs> can I just give you a massage and get this over with? <laughs> do their version of Fear Factor. Mm. At the time, we were shooting all that, so I was tasked with doing these on air dares with the all that cast. So we get with the writers and we come up with all these ideas and it's hard to do because we don't have the budget of fear factor sure. and we can't put the kids in dangerous situations like the adults are put in. So kids. it was hard to, yeah, hard to come kids. up with. Yeah, they're kids. Yeah, they're kids. With stuff. But we would come up with all these ideas of dares they could do. We would uh, uh, give them to the network and they would say, one, tell us the ones that were okay. Right. Those are the ones we shot. Those are the ones that aired. At the time, I had no indication that any kid ever had a problem with them. But. When I was watching the show over the past two nights, I now know that there were kids who did have problems with the on-air dares. And it breaks my heart. And I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to any kid who ever had to do a dare or anything that they didn't want to do or weren't comfortable doing. We went out of our way to make sure they were safe and, and that everything was done properly. But if a kid was scared and didn't want to do it, kids shouldn't have had to do it. Yeah. Period. The end. Right. And if I had known at the time, I would, I would have changed it on the spot. No, I, mean, I mean, there's... As much as I don't, again, I have to keep saying this. As much as I don't want to agree with him, he's kind of right. Like, yeah, especially stuff like that, like the insurance reasons and stuff. Like, yeah. he, I'm sure they, yeah, they had to like present these to lawyers and stuff to make like we're not gonna get sued, right? Right. Like, and the thing is, is too, is like when like these contestants on like Fear Factor on there, I'm sure they have to sign a bunch of waivers and shit. Right. I doubt these kids had to sign like anything like that. Oh, no. Except to have their contracts for the show. Right. Yeah. There's probably like some limited stuff. But as he said, it, but they got to be safe. So, I mean, granted, again, I see the problem not so much being like, oh, a dog was licking a child covered in peanut butter. That's kind of oddly creepy. Um like, I think, I think that it it was more of a whoever's coming up. Maybe, maybe a little Dan Schneider. Maybe there's a little Dan Schneider fault there. I will. I'm, I'm gonna say that's a good opportunity for me to be like Dan. Yeah, Dan, you know better. Shame, 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 shame. But also, there's some other people that work for him that yeah. we, you know, could be sus. Yeah. So there's, there's that's where the real problem lies. And the fact that he says he see, he thinks there are some that cross the line tells me a little bit like, yeah, maybe there's something that that. Yeah. I mean, even he said he was like, we were pushing the envelope. Yeah, you know, like unfortunately, like it's it wouldn't be as big of a deal if you were pushing the envelope with adults. Yeah, when yeah. you push the envelope with kids, yeah, you're crossing. It's, into a lot of it, gray. It probably wasn't the idea. Looking at it now, again, at the time, I understand it's in the moment. They got a fear factor is a big sensation. Mm. Everybody's talking about it. But 
you know, look back, it's like, did you need to do a Fear Factor right. thing? Was that really even necessary to do? Like, I don't think it added to anything. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I, I honestly, that <laughs> clip that they showed on the documentary, I've never seen that in my life. No. And I never even heard of it. Yeah. Like, I don't know how, like, I'm sure it didn't last long. It, it, there's no way it would have, because it, it would have been too disruptive to the, it's a, it's a sketch show. It was right. for all that, I think, right? So. I think, it, I think he, I don't know if it was for all that or for if it was like a spinoff. Oh, okay. But I, I don't know. It, they used the all that kids. I don't yeah. know if it was part of the show or. Because that would be, you only have 20 minutes. Like, that's kind of distracting right. to make him have to do a dare in the middle of it. Like, it's, why don't you just do another skit of right. Super Dude? Or repair man, 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 Yeah. Or Pierre Escargo. Yeah, that's another good one. Just put Keenan back on it. Why do these dares? Just get Keenan back on the show. What are you doing? What are you doing? We also saw the series highlight two former writers viewers, two women. Oh, this is the all right. Let's let's let them cook on this one. Let's 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 let them cook on this because this this is fucking. I got this. I got is, this made say. me almost turn the fucking documentary completely off. Yeah. Let's talk about these two ladies. Who spoke about a wage discrepancy. Now, I know that you don't divvy out salaries. Talk to me about that part. Well, you're correct. I have nothing to do with paying writers. I never have. I've never made a writer's deal. And of all the writers I've been in a writer's room with, I never even knew how much most of them were getting paid. Yeah, but we saw these two women who were writers for you sharing one salary. How does that happen? How does that happen? How does that happen? Hmm. Are they entry-level writers? Um, I interns? Mean, are they? Let's find out. Let's find out. Because I know, like, interns, for the longest time up until I think it's finally changed probably in the last few years, they, they don't typically get paid at all. all right. So... It's very simple. There's a common practice in television when hiring writers. If you have a spot for a new writer, sometimes... You'll go to two writers and say, hey, if you two new writers for your first job are willing first to job. share a salary, you can both have the job. Mm. They have the opportunity to say, yes, that sounds good, or no, no thank you. In this case, it was two women writers. I've done another show where that teaming was done with two male writers, and they split a salary. I did another show where it was a male and a female writer, and they split a salary. So, and these are all first-time writers? All first-time writers looking for their first gig. Oh, Got no. so they didn't mention that in the documentary, <laughs> no. that they're a first-time writer. No, they did not. They just mentioned, like, oh, I got a job, and then last minute I found out I have to split my salary. Yeah. And then and and they could have a decision. I think we talked about this. They could have just been like, no, I don't like that. That sounds stupid. Right. But they also probably knew, like, oh, it's kind of a customary thing. Like, if, if I don't have – I need to build my resume. So if I do a period of time with this show, you know, making less money – Eventually, I can go work another show and make more money. It's called getting your foot in the door. Yes. Nobody starts off. And then they try to frame it like he was only doing it to women, which I picked up on on the documentary. And I was like, I don't think this is a woman thing. I think this is more of an industrial. Well, they're not funny. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's true, too. <laughs> Yeah, they try to like tie it into like a, uh, you know, a misogyny thing. And in reality, it's an industry problem. Now, you could say that that's not a that's not a fair practice. And I could agree with you there. I don't think splitting a salary is the way where you can get more work for less and capitalize on the fact that I don't have experience. And I'm sure in this day and age, there's probably less of that happening anyway. Um But then to make that argument, right. don't make this fake argument right. about. But it, it is weird sexism. because it, it's like not that they have to do that, but like. What if you don't know if the writer is any good? You well, know that's what I mean. Like, it's, it's a risky you, move, yeah. You can't bring in someone, have them write, like, three episodes, and you're like, this is fucking terrible. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you you come in, you know, give your little two cents and see if you can grow with it. My you know? guess, honestly, is that this practice has is probably not used as much anymore, and that's why we have such terrible fucking Netflix – TV shows and movies and all this yeah. other shit because they probably just bring them on and they're too afraid of getting some sort of Schneider. backlash. Yeah, <laughs> they're getting Schneider because saying like, oh, you gave, you know, I don't know. But that's that's what I thought. So get good. <laughs> get good and get good now. Got it. Now in the series, they also highlighted two black actors who said that they felt overlooked. Now I want to be clear. 
I'm never going to speak on anyone else's journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can talk about my experience, how my experience was with you, what I saw prior to working with you. But again, I don't want to speak on anyone's journey. I saw you be honored for diversity in your work. Yes. And the reason for that is diversity has always been very important to me in my shows. If you go back to the very first Nickelodeon show I ever made, that's very evident as it is in the second one, and then the first movie I ever made for Nickelodeon, which starred Keenan and Kel, and every show I did after that had a lead black actor in it. I'm very proud of that. It's very important to me. Yeah, I and think I, this... I, I like how Bugs is like, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that was another thing. I, I remember that part, and I was like, yeah, you can't... Again, if you want to make a documentary about the, the, the crimes of Dan Schneider... Focus on the creepy stuff. You can't say he's a racist. Right. Because I'm going to be honest, the best parts of all that growing up, back when I would watch it, Keenan and Cal. Keenan, Cal. There was, there was a few other, um, uh, I mean, down the road it was like Nick Cannon and stuff. But, but it, I mean, those are the standout people. You had TLC doing the fucking theme song, mm-hmm. Coolio. Yeah. Like, you had all this. Like, I would. that's how I got introduced to Blackstreet and Busta Rhymes and fucking some of these, like, it was a very you can't say right. There's no way you could say he's racist in that. There's a racial thing that, that again and then again to make that case and then like an episode later it's like uh, Brian Peck is a rapist right. <laughs> like oh, well yeah and you look at like, uh, you look at Keenan and Kel like specifically they were on the first all that yeah. Keenan's still doing Saturday Night Live and yeah. he's had. Plenty of roles and other shit. Kel's gone on to do some stuff. He was like a game show host yeah. on BT and other shit. They actually had talent. Like yeah. these two, little fetus and <laughs> nose boy, you could tell at the time yeah, that they, they're like, these, they're not Keenan and Kel no. and they're probably not going to do anything after this. Yeah, no, it's just not, it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. Some, hey, not everybody can hit, uh, hit a home run. No. You know, I try, try to tell them. Uh. Not only am I proud that they were in my shows, I'm exceptionally proud of the achievements they've had beyond my shows, and they've gone on to bigger and better things, and that gives me a great sense of pride. Well, something that really kind of bothered me was how they depicted your relationship with the cast. Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah, just me being there, I knew the dynamic was trust. I understood that in situations where they may have had turmoil, whether it be with their families, whether it be other castmates, they came to you versus how they made you look. With that said, Amanda Bynes was brought up in the series mm-hmm. and her emancipation and how you were involved in that. Can you Okay, talk- so now I'm going to say this. I said this before. The Amanda Bynes-Dan Schneider connection, little, little odd. Little odd. I understand why he favored... F- was a favor of hers because she was talented. Yep. He was able to book not only one another one other show, but actually a network sitcom with yep. her. So she brought him success. I understand there's a connection there. I understand that they probably work close together. But looking at her now, and whatever the hell was going, I, I don't. Right. There's something. Something's a little odd. And it's either, it, yeah, it's probably either from him or the parents because like yeah. the parents, even in the documentary, like. Her dad was very close to him, well, so well. Part and, and and when you l- l- listen to how he talks about this, he skims over a lot, which me leaves me with a lot of questions still afterwards. Of like, well, I'll let him. I'll let him say it because right. it'll make more sense. To us about it a bit, sure. Um, Amanda was between the ages of sixteen and seventeen. And she wanted to get emancipated from her parents. Yeah, because they're only going to talk about the emancipation part. Yeah, which. That wasn't even the crate. That, yeah, that wasn't the. That that, that was kind of irrelevant. It, it was. It was the toward the end of what happened to the relationship at the end. Right. Like why did they? Obviously, he got kind of booted from the sitcom, and you know she stopped work with him after that. That and, and you know if he would address like the other actors being like they would disappear for a long time yeah like there's other things but he's only going to talk about the emancipation which was a fairly common thing with successful young actors at least at the time sure um and she wanted that for herself so she turned to her team 
which included her lawyer, her agent, her manager, her publicist, me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. We supported her. She tried to get emancipated and ended up not working out. She didn't. Well, since we're here, let's oh, stay she here never for a moment. Even did. Okay. There was also an incident where she had ran away from home. Yes. She so she tried to get emancipated. I, I didn't pick up on this when I watched it before. She tried to get emancipated. It didn't work. And then he's still in her life. Yeah, and she runs away from home. Yeah. So that's see, what's what's that about? Like there, I don't know, man. Because who put the idea of emancipation in her head? She right. just she's just gonna find that out on her own. Well, she, I mean, she could. She's like you know in the industry, not the fucking but uh, back Dan Schneider. But like she could be talking to other child actors and so, and with an agent, they could be like, well, hey, like. And what's the story with the parents? What's the story? Like, what is that's a problem? Right. They, they didn't do any legwork in this documentary when they talked about it they just kind of gave us surface level stuff but there was like i always got to ask like well, wait a minute let's ask a couple questions more like what's going on with her family and and maybe the family there was there wasn't anything wrong with the family but maybe digging into that could show that there's some sort of apprehension about them not like in dan schneider or something yeah. kind of like drake's dad yeah, or yeah something. i was gonna say well it might be a brian peck situation where he yeah. like kind of wedged himself in between their relationship who knows right right um can you talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation yes uh one night it was very late well after midnight one or two in the morning phone rang i answered it was amanda she was upset she was in distress. She had had some conflict with her parents, I think her father, and she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Who is that person, though? Yeah. That's what I want to know, and he doesn't ever elaborate. Right. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need you. Yeah, and Boogie, of course, does not push on that right. subject. Because that's what like, well, who was it? Yeah. Because if it's like, I'd like to know who that person was. Because then how does that person pick them up and then she's at the police station? Like, what? what's the... I don't... See, that one still doesn't sit right with me. I get... This is where I think these are, these are the Schneider crimes. These are where the Schneider crimes lie. Here and with the massages. <laughs> I think those are where the Schneider crimes are. Not with Getting Schneidered. Not with the nose boy and MC Fetus and a couple fucking writers, you know, for their first job getting paid less and women not being funny. These are the real crimes. The that crimes. said, let's talk about some of the things that have just been swirling forever. Okay. You were banned from your set. Never, never. Never happened. That is. So I think this is in reference to Amanda's other uh, show. Yeah, on UPN or whatever the fuck. Yeah. CW. False rumor. What happened? Add it to the list of false Talk rumors. Talk to me. What happened? Because the, the, he was at, he co-created, quote unquote, I don't know the specifics. Yeah, with the, with the per dude from Friends. Yeah, the, the guy dude. who made Friends or something. Who, who it's, I mean, that's, you know. Who's going to carry more weight in, you know, in yeah. decision making? Friends is no boy meets world, <laughs> but people like it. For sure. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a big, big show. I hate it. Adult actresses at the time, and they had their own specific reasons for not wanting to do the show anymore. Mm. Mm. I'm not judging that. It got tense. And what they don't know, maybe, is I did everything I could to make that show go away. My producer partner at the time, we would call and say, this is a not a good situation. Okay. So I, I decided I'm going to do what most showrunners do, which is you're not on the set. There's a director there to shoot it. I'll go up to the writer's room. I'll work on the next script. But yeah. because everybody was so used to me caring about every detail of every show so yeah. much, for me not to be on the set, yeah, maybe some people thought I got banned. So it was more of an assumption because this guy's usually here and now he's not. I don't know if it was an assumption. I don't know if somebody thought they were making me look bad by saying I got banned uh, from the set. I have no idea. Okay. All I know is I was never banned from the set. Yep. The he's darkest he part of it. He was probably asked not to be there. Um, my assumption. I'm assuming he's getting in arguments. And he's mentioning like, oh, they didn't want this. this. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're talking because they don't mention the specific show either. They talk in too many generalities. So I was, I was assuming, listening to this, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I I take it when he, she's he's talking about the Amanda Bynes show. Yeah. The the second one, the sitcom. Yeah. The the one on UPN. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Because he said he, they're working with adult actresses now and shit yeah. like that. So. Yeah. And he probably clashed with some of those people and they were probably like, Dan, uh, you need this to get out of This is not a kid show. Yeah. Beat it. Why don't you go do some kid stuff? Yeah. Why don't you get some kids to go go get a massage <laughs> up with with your uh, siatsu massage machine? As, no one's touching you as here, Vince Dan. Vince McMahon once said to Bret Hart, "Yeah, I think Dan screwed Dan." Oh, I thought you were gonna quote the clip of, "Why don't you come out, you rapist?" No, <laughs> that was not it. Did you see that one? No, then? you didn't see that. Hold on, let's take a little side side. Let's take a little deviation real quick. Do you didn't see this Vince clip that's been making the rounds? I mean, um, I probably have. <laughs> um, come on out, you. Yeah. Right here. Come on out, you rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he talking to? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some Hall Oates. Why did they go to Hall Oates after that? Why was that the suggested song after that? <laughs> Man eater. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the uh, Dan it's... screwing Dan. <laughs> oh, Triple H. He's oh, the, right. he's calling Triple H a rapist. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah, let's go back to this. No idea. Okay. All I know is I was never banned from the set. Yep. The darkest part of this series discussed child predators. Now, I want to make sure that we clear a couple of things up. Okay. Brian Peck was not hired by you. No, I did not hire Brian Peck. This was a Tolan Robbins production? Yeah. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Mm. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? He did say. Yeah. mentioned in the show that we watched last night. Yeah. And next, I heard that he went to court when this guy was being tried, Peck. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom. See, that this is... All right. We'll let this play out in a second, but this is the part where, because coincidentally, this is the end of the interview, <laughs> and it's like, everyone's upset at me, but there's 50 other celebrities you could look at that supported this Brian Peck, you know. Piece of trash. This piece of trash. He's basically, basically what Dan Schneider's saying uh, really is just, uh, he's just saying to everybody. Come on out, you. <laughs> That's what he's saying to everybody right now. You don't like me? Oh, come on, you <laughs> rapist! <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so this is, and which, and and I do believe, like, I believe that Dan Schneider didn't know about the Brian Peck thing. Right. However, from what I understood, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong, but the Brian Peck was on many of his shows so you know like he says like oh in this case i didn't hire him but it's right. like you can make decisions though who's there or not and if you work with someone long enough you're telling me you didn't get an inkling about this right guy. not one inkling and like when the especially when like the dad yeah like, it, who probably isn't as close on set with them as yeah. dan schneider would be and and he's going and, and and you know this guy is like in trading letters with John Wayne Gacy yeah. and shit like that like this guy is something else right and yeah anyway going you know traveling hours to go to Drake's concert yeah it's that's just I don't know went to court when this guy was being tried Peck and when Drake walked in he saw fifty people sitting on the side of the courtroom, supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters 
four pack character letters praising him for who he was and asking for leniency and they knew that he was guilty they knew he had confessed to some degree mm -hmm. and they still did this it's just, that's baffling that adults would do that yeah and i don't know if people know this but drake's mom a lovely woman who i stay in contact with this day she came to me at the time and she said Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course. And I did. And he ended up going to prison and serving his time. And yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career. And here's the kicker that I really don't get. After he got out of prison and was, to my knowledge, a registered sex offender, he was hired on a Disney Channel show. Oh, you know what he's doing? He's like, hey, Disney. Hey, Disney. Come on out, you rapist. <laughs> come out, Disney. Why don't you come on out? Don't be looking at me. WCW is right down the road. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Oh, you want to... Disney Channel wants to hire Brian Peck? Come on out, you rapist! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, boy! <laughs> uh, that, that is... <laughs> Bug's face. Yeah, he's not liking this. He's like, don't don't be playing Vince over this. Come this on. That's disrespectful. Come on. Um, but I will say, that is pretty sus yeah, for Disney. That, that is really <laughs> fucked up. Dude, but, he like, just he, was convinced. And, and the thing is, is in the documentary, it said, like, um, everything has been cleared or some shit. <laughs> yeah. and they're like, what? Yeah, what does that mean? That's all he had to do is, like, they were like, hey, what happened? Uh, why were you in prison for X amount of years? Ah, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, what? You want, want to work? You know that thing that yeah. happened? You want to work with some kids? Yeah. You want to work with kids? Come on. It had nothing to do with kids. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. No, well, it was speeding tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Unpaid parking tickets. You know how Hollywood is. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't that understand. slow shake of his head. <laughs> yeah, Boogie was not liking this. He didn't like what we were saying. Disapproval. That? Um, I never, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing it, man. Are you okay? You want to take a minute? No, I'm all right. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going I think for another really two minutes. Some important things. We <laughs> set the record straight on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Before I let you get out of here, I appreciate the vulnerability that you use in knowing that there's definitely things that you would have and should have done differently. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we haven't discussed? Anything that if you could go back and navigate the, the journey differently, what would that look like? Um, yeah, there's the definitely shots. things that I... <laughs> Wait, what? Like the nose voice snot and shit like that. Oh, 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 oh. I was like, wow. He's just coming all right out of it. With it. He's like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't have been. A... <laughs> I wouldn't have hired a rapist. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, have the cum shots. I wouldn't have probably shown feet. Yeah. <laughs> and I wouldn't have been in that hot tub cl fully clothed. Yeah. But I would do differently. Um, one that I think would be really, really important is when you're hiring young actors, minors, to work in television, I would suggest that we have a licensed therapist there to oversee that process for the specific reason of making sure that those kids really wanted to do this job, that yeah. they really wanted to be on television. Yeah. Maybe they should even be informed about what that means. What's it going to mean if you're famous? What's that going to mean on social media? What's it going to mean within your family? Let them find out. And then that way, if a kid doesn't want to be on a TV show, they can opt out. Yeah. That, that psychologist, that therapist could come to us and say, this kid is, is, doesn't want to do it. Or their parents aren't, aren't uh, understanding of what's going to come. And then we could avoid the mistake of ever putting a kid in a TV show that didn't want to be there. Um, and additionally, the main thing that I would change is how I treat people and everyone. I, I definitely I just don't like Boots' like slow like 
it, it, well, it, he's acting. That's, that's the problem. He's giving um, um, acting vibes, you know. This is, it makes the interview seem so fake and phony. Where I, I believe what Dan Schneider's saying is, may not be truthful per se, but it, he is speaking, he's just speaking. Like, right. he's not reading a script. Where Boogie, everything he's saying here is Yeah, it looks like he's reading the question, like... Yeah. What would you do different? And in parentheses, it's like, shake your head with interest. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm pl- he's playing a role of an interviewer. He's not actually, like, they're not having an actual conversation here. Give people the best of me. I, I didn't show enough patience. I could be cocky and definitely overambitious and sometimes just straight up rude and obnoxious, and I am so sorry that I ever was. And, um... When I watched the show, I could see the hurt in some people's eyes, and it made me feel awful and regretful and sorry. Um, I wish I could go back, you know, especially to those earlier years of my career, and bring the growth and the experience that I have now and just do a better job and never, ever feel like it was okay to be an asshole to anyone ever. Um, look, I, I wanted to make funny TV shows for kids, and we definitely did that. But if I could go back, I would get it done in different ways. I, I'd just be nicer as often as possible and listen more to the people on my team. And um, I would do everything that I could to make sure that everyone had a good experience. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, goodbye. Dan, I appreciate yeah. your time. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. I thought it was Dan's house. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, at the end of the day, um, what he says at the end here is correct. Like My my biggest criticism of Dan Schneider walking away is he said he was an asshole. He probably still right. is. He was just a big, spoiled, big, big baby asshole. Yep. Big pain in the ass to be around. Definitely some creepiness with Amanda Bynes, 100%. Yep. And also, who he surrounded himself with. Because, again, that Brian Peck, from what I g- gathered, was on multiple yeah. shows. Yeah, because so. I, I believe he was on the Amanda show, at least, and then Drake and Josh, maybe? Yeah, there was a few. Well, definitely Drake and Josh, yeah, because he wanted to well, be the dad. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because I think he met Drake when he was on the Amanda show. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know. But yeah, that's that's pretty much his re- his rebuttal, I guess you could say. Uh, not much of one. You mentioned this other thing here too. That we I have not seen it, but I guess Keenan may be saying something about yeah, this. Yeah, so um, it came up as kind of like one of those clickbait things. Uh, I didn't click on it, but uh, we got the uh, Tamron Hall show. I don't Tam- know. Who, yeah, I Tamron don't know, Hall. I don't know who she is. I think she's like the new Ellen, maybe or something. Um, but she's – now, it's a 12-minute interview. We're not watching this whole thing. But I just basically went to – obviously, people want to see Quiet on the Set because he's here to talk about his book, mm-hmm. Good Burger 2, and there's quite and, you know, YouTube has this great feature that they – I think they actually took this feature from, like, Pornhub. Which I actually didn't know they had this feature. It's only on desktop. But, yeah, you can, you can see, like, there's a graph of, like, where most people watch. And I remember Pornhub doing this way back when. So it's like when people nut. It was it was always funny to go on to Pornhub and look at that and be like, just pick something and be like, what's the most popularly watched sections? And sometimes you're like, really? That? <laughs> There's nothing even happening. Why is everybody on this? The delivery um, man hasn't even taken off his clothes yet. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, so this is where most people, most replayed segments right here. Um and uh, let's just jump in, and it looks like we got about a minute of where people are really watching. So let's take a look. There's a minute, and, and if there's nothing good there, there's a little segment here we can take a look. This might be, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what we're going to We have no idea what we're getting into. Which was released in December. You talk about life's lessons, the funny stories, the questionable oh, parenting book. advice. I saw this in said, the story the other day. But I almost you also talk it. about Amanda Bynes. I was like, I'm not reading about this. her oh, Amanda in Bynes. the book. Um, and you say she was like all of our little sister. And we've all been very protective of her. We had to watch out for our little ones. Amanda was the sweetest, happiest girl, and she loved to laugh. She was an explosion of bright innocence and joy. 
I connected with her because she was laser focused like me and had a very sweet, supportive family. Unfortunately, some leeches sent her down. A okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. She had a very sweet and supportive family. Because I was just saying earlier, yeah. like, well, what's with the family? Then she says, unfortunately, she had some leeches. Yeah, so who's a leech? Let's go back. And it's interesting, though, because when they rebooted all that and everything, they didn't bring Dan Schneider in. Keenan took over yeah. that. And Keenan was – Keenan redid Good Burger, which is a Dan Schneider production, right. which I don't think Dan Schneider – let me look up. Good Burger 2, is Dan Schneider connected to that? At all. I don't know. I mean, granted, he might have a credit for, like, creating because it's a sequel. Right. But uh, Good Burger 2 is Dan Schneider. Characters created by Dan, based on. But if you look at all these credits, I don't think there's a Dan Schneider. Danny Temporelli's in there. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like... Yeah, they got Pete Davidson. They got Ron Funches, <laughs> Lori Beth, Josh Server. Josh Server comes back. Wow, but yeah, there is no Dan Schneider. Let me. I'm just gonna do a quick search for Dan. Flame retardant. Okay, that's good to know. Dan Schneider, we just talked about. That's not Dan. Nope. Danny Tamborelli. Yeah, there's no Dan Schneider connection here. Uh, so I'm. It, this is interesting. So I'm wondering if he's referencing that's what he's talking about with leeches. But let's let's watch the clip in full. Come on. Let's see. Me and had a very sweet, supportive family. Unfortunately, some leeches sent her down a dark path. When she went left for a little while, we all were sad. I cared about her, and I still do. She's good people. That's a good quote. It's yeah. A yeah. It's, 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 it's a beautiful quote. It's a good, a good quote, quote. That, that I wrote. <laughs> I just saw a post. She's trying to go to nail school. She wants to go to cosmetology school. Good. And I kind of follow her from afar. Have yeah. you been able to talk with her lately at all? I unfortunately haven't spoken to Amanda since she was really, really young. Like yeah. when she was doing like her first movies. I think the soccer movie yeah. was like around that time. It was the last time I actually saw her. So, um, but you I'm chose just to write about her it yeah. from afar. Because, yeah, I'm just going down memory lane. And I got to shout out my, my writing partner, yeah. Dibs Bear, because she did a, a wonderful job on this book with me. Um, and I, I never get to. to that's shop. why he said it was a great quote because he's like, "Oh, I didn't write that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, that's from my book. Yeah." Come out. So shout out to Dibs. Um, yeah. It's a wonderful book, and from he what I've been told, he's out of his mind. By the way. Oh, he probably is. <laughs> he probably is. Read it is. for is people. It? Um, I mean, it's not just a good read. It's it, yeah. I, my my team knows. I'll be very honest. I'm not a fan of memoirs because I've had people come on and <laughs> Your they book go, sucks. "I didn't write that." I'm like, "No, it's on page 16." Right, right. Or yeah. you know, or it's it's a yeah. weird thing with memoirs, and I've had it happen many times. But you did not lean out of any of the things that you put in the book, including your love for your your support of Amanda, mm -hmm. and okay. you know. The big story in the room, as you know, is this documentary okay, called here we Quiet go. on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. It is a series um, that I've watched. I know you haven't seen it, and I understand why. It's a, you didn't participate in it. Um, you're not quoted in it. But it is an investigation into allegations of sexual abuse, racism, sexism, and more at Nickelodeon um, by a show creator, Dan Schneider, who played a part in creating some of the work that you did there. Mm -hmm. Um, Schneider produced all that uh, for four seasons and executive produced Keenan Cal, I think just for one season. Yeah, um, I mean, I know tough. this is hard. It's a tough subject, you know, because it's tough for me because like, I can't really speak on things that I never witnessed. You know what I'm saying? Because all these things happened after I left, basically. And Dan wasn't really on Keenan and Kel like that. I mean, he got it created by credit, but. You know, it was a different showrunner, so... Mm, interesting. Our worlds weren't really, like, overly, you know, overlapping like that outside of all that, necessarily. Mm -hmm. And then all that negativity kind of started happening outside of, like, our tenure there. You know what I mean? So, like... Interesting. I wasn't really aware of a lot of it, but my heart goes out to, you know, anybody that's been victimized or... So that's interesting to take away because I didn't realize he wasn't uh, hands-on with, with them. Right. So my what with Keenan and Cal? Keenan and Cal, yeah. and from the sounds of it, Good Burger and everything else from there. Well, he was in Good Burger. He was in the first one. He well, was I know he in was it. in it, like a he probably yeah. did a cameo or, or a role in it. But like, I don't. From the way he's talking, it sounds like he really wasn't in the 
creative process right. of that. You know, not like he was with 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 what sounds like the Amanda show yeah. and what became her next show and so on. And so, and then he mentions that like a lot of this happened after he was moved on, probably moved on from Dan Schneider. Right. Because Dan Schneider kind of left for a while just to bank on Amanda and then came back. Right. And uh, then it got bad. So right. a lot of what he's kind of not saying leans to say like, yeah, Dan Schneider's kind of a piece of shit. And the thing is too is he's kind of alluding to Dan Schneider may have not have had as much control at the beginning of all that. Yeah. And then getting Amanda Bynes and kind of discovering her. Right. He, like, kind of was on the coattails of her. Right. Makes the Amanda show, which is his full creation. Right. And then the right. next, you know, revamp of all that with new ki- new kids. That's who we saw in, you know. Yeah, I, I think Dan Schneider is the leech that he's referencing. I think he's alluding to the fact that when Dan Schneider had a bigger role, it got bad. Like, Dan Schneider, I, I'm going to say, as I said in the beginning, that documentary did a, made a bad argument, but it doesn't mean Dan Schneider is innocent. Yes. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not Team Schneider. Rob Schneider. I do like Rob Schneider. Which Rob Schneider? The animal and the carrot. Not so much the stapler. Maybe the hot chick. Wasn't that a movie? Didn't yeah. you know that one? Okay. Didn't like Deuce though. Didn't didn't like the <laughs> the one we graduated with? No, I didn't like that one either. So not all, all right. not all Schneiders. Just a couple. He's all right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's let's see if there's anything more uh to be gleaned here. Their families, you know what I mean? I mean like I think it's a good thing that the doc is out and is, you know, putting things, you know, on display that need to be, you know, stories okay. that need to be told for this, okay. you know, for this sake. Um, but it's definitely tough to watch because I have fond memories of that place, you know, and I have fond memories of, you know, my co-stars and stuff like that. So no, not of Dan. That they've gone through terrible things like that is just, it's really tough. Um. We did reach out to Dan Schneider's team, and they directed us to a response that he posted on YouTube. Um, we also reached out, of course, to the production company, and they said that, you know, they investigate all of these things, um, investigate all of the allegations. Well, investigate um, more. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. I mean, Ooh. It's, it's like, you know, it's supposed to be a safe space, you know? It's supposed to be a safe place for kids. And, like, to hear all about that is just, like... How dare you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Nickelodeon cut ties with Dan Schneider in 2018, and they said that they investigate all formal complaints. But going back to what you said about the memories, I mean, to your point, the reason why when you and Kale returned and you had what was the highest watched reboot. Say um, that again. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me get the number. Oh, he's rubbing it in Schneider's Damn. face. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, more people watched the reboot than yours. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, let me make sure. Keenan and Kale, when they reunited for Good Burger 2, mm-hmm. from your own, by the way, his mm-hmm. own production company. Oh, 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 not the Schneider production company, his own. Damn. Keenan. He's fucking, he, you know what he's saying, basically. He's saying, hey, Dan Schneider. Welcome to Good Burger. Yeah. Well, more so, hey, Dan Schneider. Come on out, you rapist. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Well, Dan Bring Schneider's it. not a. Uh, He's Bring not, it. He's not the rapist. Bring Ryan it, Schneider. Peckins. Well, as far as we know. <laughs> All right, let's see what else. Artists for Artists on Paramount Plus in November. It's the streaming platform's most watched original film to date. Wow. Hey. I'm going to have to check it out there. on DVD yesterday. I never it saw the original. Blooper reels really? and outtakes. Mm-hmm. SNL star Leslie Jones is in it. Let okay, me t- all right. Well, that's all a, right. that was a commercial. But, um, all right, that was interesting. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because that that kind of filled some holes that I had. And, uh, all right, see, everybody, I think I, I, think I redeemed myself because there was some people thinking that I was having some extra hot takes last time uh, as if, like I was, you know, a, a Schneider supporter. I'm not. I'm just saying the documentary wasn't that great. And I and but the fact that Keenan says 
if Keenan says it's good and that they need to dig in more, which I think they yeah, do need to dig yeah, in more. They do have to dig they in more. They do have to dig in more. I don't believe that he didn't see it. Yeah. I don't for a for a second think that he, he didn't He definitely saw it. Um, he just didn't want to talk about it. Right. Yeah. So it gives him a good excuse. But he's like, yeah, dig in more. And he's like, oh, how about I do it and I do it better? Yeah. And he With is. With his good. production yeah. team that made Good Burger too. Yeah. And uh, you know what goes great with Good Burger? What is a W energy drink? Yes, it is. It's great. Go to W.GG. It's the sponsor of the show. Use promo code 64 bit legends. They got hydration, they got fuel, yep. they got everything. If stop drinking coffee, stop drinking bullshit pop, get yourself some W energy. It fucking works. They have great flavors, great powdered drink. You just mix it with water. Like, I think they, um, they, uh, Wants you to mix it with like eight to twelve ounces of water. It's fucking amazing. Um, I drink it every day. Ten percent off using the code sixty four bit legends. There you go. Shout out to Dubby. Shout out to Dubby. It makes it super simple. You said sixteen ounces or so. It's eight to twelve. Well, sixteen. You know what you do? You take a big gulp out of a water bottle like yep. that, and then you pour the rest in and shake it up. Yep. You're ready to go. Yep. That's all you got to do. So do it. You're missing out if you're not. Don't be a fucking idiot. Um, and uh, I think you know what? I'm I'm proud of what we did here. We we covered this. We got into the ins and outs. We good burger to this. You know, I was we were talking before the podcast about you know we missed out on the Vince thing. I I talked a little bit about the Vince McMahon stuff on my stream. Uh, when it first dropped, yeah, but we didn't get to cover it on here. I think it was. I'm I, sure there's going to be a documentary coming about that. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, we'll probably recover it once there more information comes out. You but know, uh, watching this, watching well, not watching this, but watching Quiet on Set, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it took me back to my childhood, right? Mm-hmm. Watching all that, and I was thinking a lot of during it, being like, man. Once someone that doesn't, once once a Karen starts watching the Attitude Era, <laughs> there's gonna be some shit. Oh yes, fucking brawn panty man. Oh, Trish Stratus yes. barking like a dog. You watch. I'm telling you, Peacock is gonna start pulling old episodes if they haven't already. I'm yeah. telling you, they're gonna start doing it. Um, well, I know they don't have the Attitude Era documentary on there anymore. What was that one? It was like, I have the DVD in my storage unit, uh-huh. but it's like basically like just going through the Attitude or era, like, you know, mm. just, it's like a documentary oh, okay, okay. about the Attitude era. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I think there's that, you know, definitely with the, with the Vince revelations. And you know what? One other thing that uh, I was thinking about, because I was thinking this too. I was like, man, you got Nickelodeon when I was growing up, and then there was a little bit of wrestling in there, and that's all corrupted. And I was like, what else is from my childhood is going to get corrupted? And the last thing I would have thought would have been the East Coast, West Coast beefs. But son of a bitch, Diddy's on the run. Diddy is on the run. (laughs) Suge Knight's doing a podcast from prison. I don't understand how that works. And he's even weighing in on it. You got Snoop Dogg's got Death Row now. You got Biggie and he's, Tupac being kayfabe. You got they're they're kayfabe. You know the the rumors are. Um, I just saw the other video. Now I can quote. We talk about the Tupac might be gay thing. Yeah. I've I've found the video um, that where I heard that because I, I don't think I quoted it right. There's an interview Michael Jai White did with. Uh, DJ Vlad. Now, Michael Jai White played Spawn in the Spawn movie mm-hmm. back in the nineties. He was also in. I think we watched part of that movie. It was like uh, it was making fun of like the seventies black movies. Yes, Black Dynamite. Yes, he's in that. You know, he's 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 in a bunch of stuff. He's I, I like him, but anyway, he's the one who has who came up with the theory, and I believe it because he's like, you look at that old interview, and all of a sudden now he's yeah. Thug Life. And there's all these other little things like yeah, because there's an interview of with Tupac when he was in high school. Yeah, and he was a lot. He was pretty femme. He was a little femme. The way that he did the the way that he did the um, I think it was Michael Jai White also said this. It was either him or somebody else. The bandana he did it the way like a woman would do it, like cleaning the house. The nose ring at the time was not a common thing for men to do. Um, Yeah, I think. Anyway, but we've we've discussed that. Yep. But yeah, Diddy. 
Diddy. What the fuck's going on with Diddy? We don't have time to talk about it today, but... Next week. I think we're going to start digging into yeah. the Diddy files. Digging into Diddy. No Diddy. Um, no Diddy. Did Diddy? 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 You know that that's the, that's the new no homo? Is no, no, no Diddy? Diddy? Yeah, that, that, that's for real. People are saying that like crazy. <laughs> well, there, I saw this thing on Twitter. It was like... It was like... The audio to Meek Mill's getting fucked by him. What? And I'm like, what? Is it really? <laughs> and this like, is why we got to research this. And, and again, I <laughs> don't like. I've seen so much shit. I don't know what to believe or what to. Be- so we got to deep dive into this. But like, yeah, it was like. But it just sounded like you know, like gay porn. <laughs> but you couldn't see a video. It's just audio of it. I don't know. I don't listen to Meek Mill's. Like I, I, I can't quote so, it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But okay. until next time, um, when we, uh, you know. Get all diddied. Mm-hmm. Um, check us out on social media mm-hmm. at 64 Bit Legends, at Melvin Troy, at Bobby Caboose, uh, twitch.tv slash Melvin Troy. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, drink some W. Yeah. But until next time, what you're going to do, brother, when Dan Schneider tells you to put your feet up close to the camera, are you going to do it? Probably because you're getting paid. Come on out, you rapist. Wow.